Good evening. I hope you all are doing well. Okay, in order to start my sermon, let me start with this uh, small quotation. Liana Henry said, uh, this is not our Liana, okay? Liana Henry said, the biggest problem in the world is no one help each other. No one help each other is the biggest problem in the world. Liana Henry said. But people say poverty, which means uh, very poor or extremely poor, is the biggest problem in the world. But I don't know, you might have your biggest problems, in, you might have your own biggest problem in your life. I do not know what problem you have. But all these problems are not the biggest problems in the world. You know, the biggest problem in the world is sin. This sin is in you and in me. This sin is in you and in me. And we all deserve to be dead. What shall we do then? We are going to die because of our sins. Now, uh, you have a sin and I am having a sin now. I have committed a lot of sin. And you too then we are going to die because of that sin. As the Bible says, the wages of sin is death. Then what shall we do? So in order to know this, please turn with me your Bibles to the book of Micah, chapter 7, verse 18 and 19. Micah 7, 18 and 19. If you found there, let me read for all of us. Who is a God like unto thee, that pardoneth iniquity, and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage. He retaineth not his anger forever, because he delighteth in mercy. 19. He will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities, and thou will cast their sins into the depths of the sea. Micah encouraged to the people of Israel with this message. And he concluded that with this message, after encouraging to the people of Israel, and he concluded uh, his prophecy with this message. You know, the book of Micah is written by Micah, Micah himself, likely uh, 735 to 700 BC, who lived in the countryside of Judah during the reigns of the wicked king like Zotham, uh, Ahaz, and Hezekiah. And in this book, Micah warned against God's judgment upon Samaria and Bethlehem for their social evils, for their corrupted leaders, leadership, and for their false prophets who give false hope to the people of Israel. But at the end, Micah concluded by encouragement. Micah concluded his prophecy by encouragement. That is, God will forgive their sins. Well, today I entitle my message, entitle my, entitle my sermon is The Incomparable God. I entitle my sermon as The Incomparable God, which means God cannot be compared. God is matchless. Nothing could be compared with God. And the purpose of this sermon is to encourage the believer, like you and me, those who are being discouraged or those who are being guilty because of the sins which we have committed in the past. So if you are being discouraged or if you are the one who is being guilty by those sins, this message is for you. You know, the, uh, there is no unpardonable sin for the people who ever come to Jesus Christ. Whoever come to Jesus, there is no unpardonable sin for them. Because God forgives our sins, God redeems our sins, God redeems from all sins, and God is incomparable, therefore God is incomparable. Okay, here I have two points. I hope these two points will encourage you who you are, to reflect who you are before God, who you are 
in the sight of God. Let us move to the first point, that is, uh, Micah knows that God is incomparable because he forgives sins. God, God forgives sins. That is my first point. You can see that in verse 18. In that, in that verse 18, it says that, Who is a God like unto thee? The question seems recalled, the question seems recall the prophet's own name. You know that name of Micah means who is like Jehovah or who is like Yahweh? Who is a God like unto thee? Here Micah is saying that God, there is no other God like you. You are incomparable God. You know the people of Samaria and Jerusalem were wicked. Their prophets were wicked. Their leaders were wicked. Their kings were wicked. Their prophets were wicked. No one was righteous man in Israel those days. But when we see in verse 18, we see that God forgave their sins. God pardoned their transgressions because God doesn't keep his anger forever. God delights in sowing mercy. He's merciful in sowing mercy. And he's merciful. Yeah, he's merciful and he is delights in sowing mercy. We can see that in verse 18. So dear friends, here I have one question for you. How many sins you have committed before you come to this service? How many sins you have committed today? Which sins you have committed today? This is a question for all of us. We are born with sin nature. And this sin nature led us to commit sin. We are committing, committing sin not because of we are not, because, not by our own, but we have a sin nature, that's why we are committing sin. And because of that sin, we are deserve, we all are deserved to go to hell. We all deserve to go to hell. But there is one way to escape from this hell. There is to come to Jesus and to believe in Jesus. If you believe in Jesus or if you come to Jesus, even though you are sinners, or even though you, you might be having at sins, even, you, even though you are sinners, God will declare you as righteous. Because if, we, if you have Jesus in your heart, if you have Jesus in your life, when God sees you, God sees Jesus in you and in me. And we are righteous before God through Jesus Christ. So believe in Jesus Christ, then we will be saved from the eternal hell. That is my first point. And let us move to the second point. That is, my God knows that God is incomparable because God redeems sinners. He redeems sinners. You can see that in verse 19. You know, the people of Samaria and Jerusalem have committed innumerable sins. They have committed many sins. There was no unfaithful, there, is, there was no faithful man in Israel. We can see directly, and uh, we can point directly to the people of Samaria and Bethlehem. There was no faithful man. No one was faithful man. They all are liars. Even within their family, there was no peace. Their parents against their children, children, parent, uh, children uh, argue against their fathers, their parents. You can see that in the preceding verse of this chapter, especially in verse 2 and 6, we see that. There was no peace. They all are liars. But what did God say to them? They are liars, they are wicked. What did God say to them? God doesn't say that he will destroy them. 
because they are wicked. Instead, God says, instead we see that in verse 19, he will again have compassion upon us. He will treat our iniquities underfoot and he will cast our sins into the depths of the sea. We can see that in verse 18. They are wicked, but God wants to redeem them. You know, dear friends, God wants to redeem us. God wants to save you and me. He wants to redeem us. No matter how sinful you are, no matter how uh, bad you are, God wants to redeem you. And God wants to save us. What a merciful God we have. Look around the world. People are wicked. People are sinful. People are liars. There was, uh, there is not much fatful man. will not find any fatful man, not much fatful man in the world. They are living in hopeless condition. Most of them are living in hopeless condition. That's why we, have, we are hearing that people commit a suicide, parents kill their children, uh, husband kill their wife, wife killing their children and husband. We have heard all those news in this world because people thought that they are hopeless, they are wicked, they are liars before God, and they thought that they are hopeless. That's why these things are happening in this world. You might be also living in, in the same way, like them. We don't know who you are. You might be living in the same way, like them, who are living in the hopeless condition. If you are living in that way, let me tell you this. If you are living in the hopeless condition, don't die yourself or don't commit any suicide or don't be discouraged with that sin, with that mind or with that thought. If you're discouraged or if you, are, if you are thinking that you are hopeless, then listen to the story of the cross. Whom do you see on the cross? Listen to the cross. Listen to the story of the cross. Whom do you see on the cross? We see Jesus, right? We see Jesus on the cross. He was hanging on the cross. So in that cross, all sins were forgiven. At the cross, all sins were forgiven. There was no unpardonable sin in the, at the cross. You can come anytime to Jesus to believe in him. You know Peter, the apostle, who was Peter? Peter was called Satan by Jesus. Not only that, he denies Jesus thrice. But what happened? After the resurrection of Jesus, his disciples saw him while he was walking at the Sea of Galilee. And when Peter recognized that, it was Jesus. And Peter, that time, Peter, he forgets who he was just days ago. And he zumped himself into the water and met Jesus before the other disciple come. You know, dear friends, when we come to Jesus, when you come to Jesus, we have, you can forget it all, who you are in the past. We have to forget it all, who, how bad you are, how sinful you are in the past. Just left it, leave it. Just left behind who you are in the past. When you come to Jesus, or when we come to Jesus, Jesus will never say to you, your sins are many. I cannot forgive your sins. He will never say that when you come to him. No matter how sinful you are, no matter, no matter how bad you are, Jesus will never say to you, your sins are many. I will not forgive you. I cannot forgive your sins. Instead, he will say to you, or he will welcome you and he will give you eternal life when you come to him by faith. 
And if you don't come to him, you will be in eternal lack of fire. That eternal lack of fire is a literal, literal, lack, literal hell. If you don't believe in Jesus, if you don't come to Jesus, you are committing sins, you are living in the sinful world, and if you don't come back to Jesus, you will be in that eternal lack of fire. But if you come to Jesus, you will be saved from those eternal death, eternal lack of fire. Dear friends, as a Christians or being a Christian, we all are Christians, I hope. We must know what is sin. If we don't know what is sin, we are not Christian. We must know what is, Christ, what is sin, being a Christ, Christian. You know what is sin is, what sin is. The Bible says, all unrighteousness is sin. All unrighteousness is sin. You can see that in verse uh, First John chapter, four, chapter 5, verse 17. All unrighteousness is sin, which means all wrongdoing is sin. That's the meaning. All wrongdoing is sin. Here we have a question. Have you done anything wrong to God? Or have you done anything which is wrong to your friends, to your parents, to your brothers? If you are doing that, it is sin. We have to turn from that. No, dear friends, you might have committed worse sin in the past by drinking or by eating, by bad relationship. You might have committed many sins. Now, some of you might have, uh, be using your phones for an unnecessary purpose. Now, phones are available for us. You might have using that phones for the unnecessary purpose. Or whatever sins you might have committed in the past. Whatever sins you might have committed.